try to change me in any way You don't own me Don't tie me down cause I never stay Today's video clearly in a theme. I'm so pumped. I'm going to see Suicide Squad tonight. I got totally motivated this week to want to do a characteristic costumey cosplay, whatever you want to call it, makeup look and hair, obviously. Um, I didn't do a tutorial on the hair, but I will link um, the hair dyes that I use. These are just custom colored extensions that I did at home, super easy and uh, not very expensive. So if you're really into doing a costume or you just want to kind of like save this for when Halloween rolls around, the hair is not a huge investment. Um, I can also link the shirt and the jewelry and some of the accessories I put together for this look if everyone would like to see that. Um, but overall, this was so much fun to create. Um, there have been a lot of looks up on um, Instagram and YouTube because of the movie coming out this weekend and a lot of them are going more pretty, you know, like really glittery eyes and kind of making it a more wearable interpretation of Harley Quinn. Um, I decided to do it a little bit more dirty and gritty. Um, you can see like the eye makeup looks sort of half cried off. Um, it's definitely a little bit messier with the hair, smearing the lipstick, just trying to make it look as much like um, the character herself as possible. Margot Robbie, my ultimate girl crush, don't even get me started. Um, so I'm so pumped to see the movie tonight. Anyway, enough is enough. I hope you enjoy this tutorial. If you do, please share, like, comment, you know the drill. And I will see you guys soon with something maybe a little bit more traditional. <laughs> okay, have fun guys, bye. So the first thing I'm gonna do, oh, well, tuck these back first. Um, first thing I'm gonna do is prime. So I'm starting with the Smashbox Primer Water. I really like the way that this goes on and also it has the best lasting power so for costumey like makeup this is probably one of my favorite primers and then I'm also going to use a second primer just in some problem areas with my pores this is from Tarte and it's their blurring primer I forget the full name but I'll link it down below and then just to brighten under the eyes and cover any dark circles we're going to go in with Becca's brightening under eye color correcting something or other. This product has the longest name in the whole universe. Again, it will be linked below. Um, I'm not doing real color correction. I, I kind of don't mind actually if any, um, you know, slight variations in skin tone come through because her skin in the movie is a little bit imperfect anyway. So that's a-okay with us for this look. This is just to really make sure that under eye circles don't look like we just didn't sleep last night. And then for foundation, um, because I want this look to be a little bit more pale, I'm going to use my Giorgio Armani Luminous Silk Foundation and my IT Cosmetics Foundation Brush. Um, and not a super heavy coverage. And I picked this one because out of all my foundations, this one's probably the lightest color that I have. Um, I didn't go out and buy a specific shade for this look, but given that it's summer, I've really been making my skin super bronzy and warm, and I've had a tan, so... Um, I had to pick the lightest thing in my arsenal. You'll see when we do concealer that I'm also going pretty light there as well. So I'm just pressing this into the skin and then with circular motions, buffing it all throughout. Not going too close to the eye area because we are going to use concealer, but just get a nice even um, layer all the way down to under the jawline um, and in any creases and crevices, just a nice even um, simple application. We're not doing anything really crazy with our skin today. In fact, we're going to do a super light contour because she's fairly pale in the movie. So we're going to stick with that. Uh, for concealer, I'm testing this little sample size of the Kat Von D Locket concealer. I've never used this before, um, but it came in such a light shade, the sample, that I was like, oh, that's perfect for this look because I don't have a concealer for my day-to-day -day wear that's this light. I think this is shade 3 Warm Light. Um, but you can see it's it's significantly lighter than my skin tone, so this will get that um, pastier complexion that we're looking for. I'm just doing under the eyes and all the areas where we'd highlight and also just on the sides of my mouth because I have a few um, broken veins there that I just want to cover a little bit. And with a tapered kabuki, this one is from Sigma, we are just going to blend this out. Um, it's not really so much about creating a really structured highlight and contour, but the lighter color in this case for this costumey like look is really going to give that lighter pale complexion that Margot Robbie has in the movie. 
You'll notice I'm also going to bring this up onto my lids because as I was testing which shadows I wanted to use for this look, because reds and bright pinks can be so pigmented, it actually dyed my <laughs> lids a little bit um, even though I washed it off and cleansed my face and everything. So I want to even it out before we go layering on more product. I also had done the red on the wrong side and then when I checked photos of her from set, I realized that it was actually her right side that had all the pink and the red. So I have to make sure that the red doesn't come through when we put blue on that eye now. So that's why I'm making sure to really conceal the lid. I'm gonna set the whole face with Cover FX Illuminating um, Setting Powder and just with a big fluffy brush, this one is from the new Morphe Elite 2 collection. I'm literally just gonna set my entire face with this. Um, normally I wouldn't do this or I would set with something that's a little more tinted to give a bronzy look, but again, I'm gonna sound like a broken record. It's okay to look a little bit more flat and one dimensional and um, pale because that is her look. Keep in mind, when you think about the Joker, the Joker's character also has a really white, pale complexion, almost doll-like. Um, so to contour a little bit, Cover FX Cream Contour Kit, I'm using this lighter shade 3, which I would never normally use, and with one drop of Argan Oil from Josie Marin and a small angled um, contouring brush, it's actually a multi-use brush, but I use it for contouring. I'm just going in with that lighter shade a little bit right under the cheekbone. You'll see it almost looks a little bit like a warmer golden skin tone, not so much like a contour color. And that's fine because it'll make it more subtle. So we don't want to lose our cheekbones, but at the same time, we're also not trying to look super chiseled and super model-like. Um, she does look fairly doll-like in the movie and... Um, you know, it's not a ton of structure and makeup to her face. Her majority of her makeup, you know, seems to be from, I mean, we know she has more on than it looks, but the majority of the, of the look for the character is really all about the blues and the reds and creating that Harlequin look, um, hence Harley Quinn. So I'm just blending that out a little bit with the same kabuki we used for the concealer and then doing a little bit around the forehead and the edges of the temples, um, just so that the face has some dimension, especially because I'm going to photograph this look, and um, without going over the top and looking like, you know, we just came back from Vogue. Same thing with the chin, very subtle. I'll also go underneath the edges of the jawline um, so that it's consistent across the face and nothing looks kind of incomplete. Um, you could skip this if you really don't want it. If you really, if you were doing this for Halloween and you really wanted that more white-faced look, um, to look more doll-like and really make it dramatic, you could leave out the contour altogether. And then finally for the nose, I'm just using my flat, chisely um, nose contour brush. I will link which one this is down below. I forget off the top of my head the number. And then, um, this is from Morphe, by the way. And then just, a, we're just doing a light nose contour. It's nothing crazy, again, keeping with the rest of this being a little less structured and a little more messy. Um, not even being super precise with it, just taking that same lighter shade from the Cover FX kit and this brush, doing down the sides of the nose, and then stopping just before the ball of the nose, and then doing the very, very front, and now just blending it all out. Um, it's not a very narrow contour, because that would feel fairly unnatural, um, given that the rest of the face is so unstructured. So it's just a little bit so that everything feels balanced, um, but nothing nothing too chiseled and too perfect. Now I'm just going back in and setting all of that cream contour with um, a little bit more of that same setting powder so that nothing runs or moves throughout the day and it also helps it look a little more subtle. And for blush I'm using MAC, I believe this is Fleur Power, and an angled blush brush from Morphe. Um, I picked this soft baby pink color because again with such a pale complexion you have to be sensitive with which blushes you're using so that they don't overpower the fairer skin tone, and also because this looks a little bit doll-like and played off well with the pinks we're going to use on the eyes. To do a more subtle highlight, I'm using the Becca Shimmering Skin Perfector, but in the poured, not the pressed. So this is the creamy one, and it's not as glittery, shiny a highlight. It's much more subtle. So just a little bit with my fingertip on the tip of the nose, down the bridge, on the chin. I'll do a tiny bit on the center of the apples of the cheeks. The, the point here isn't really to highlight and be like, damn, highlight on fleek. This is more about just making the skin look dewy because what we do with the eyes, it kind of looks like her face has been rained on or cried on and wet. So for her tattoos, we want to do this before the eye makeup so it really looks like it's part of her skin and not underneath 
uh, I'm, not, I'm sorry, not on top of her eye, the eyeshadow that's going to come down the face. I'm using the Kat Von D Tattoo um, Liquid Liner Pen, and I'm just drawing a heart right here on the apple of the cheek. So this is um, the right side of the face. So the right side of the face is where she has all the pinks and reds. So the hair, the eye makeup, etc. And that's also where the two um, facial tattoos are. So I just draw that heart, outline it as carefully as I can, use the tip of the pen to the, your advantage. It's very precise if you um, kind of use it gently and don't let the stroke get too thick, and then you have a little bit more control. And then I just filled that in. And then to do the um, rotten type that's down kind of along her jawline, I did it a little bit smaller than it is in the movie, just so it doesn't didn't overpower my entire face. But technically the tattoo, the actual letters themselves are a bit bigger, I believe, on her face than I'm drawing them here. But that's why it's an interpretation and you can do with it what you want. Um, so again, I'm just using the very tip of the Kat Von D liner pen. This is great for drawing this kind of detail. Keep in mind that when you're drawing it looking in a mirror, you have to draw everything backwards because the mirror is showing you a reversed image. So I highly recommend practicing this before you actually try to do the look like just on your bare face the night before or something like that, just so you can get the hang of drawing all of the letters in reverse to your own eye. Um, after I wrote out all the letters, and they're a little messy because the tat itself on her face, if you look closely, is actually a little bit messy. And then I'm just putting a few little slabs on the ends of the um, tips of the letters and tightening up that O. So now for eyes, I'm using the Morphe palette uh, 35B, which I guess stands for bold, and we're going to use this hot fuchsia and this very um, clean red. With a fluffy Morphe brush, I'm just going to go in with the pink first, because the pink is the dimensional colors, meaning just like a transitional shade you'd put on your lid first underneath to allow everything to blend out more seamlessly. We're putting the pink on the bottom because we're going to put the red over it and then just touches of the pink shine through. Um, you don't want this to come up too far above the crease because it will start to get messy and out of control. A little messy is okay. It does. This does not have to be perfect. As you saw from the beginning of the video, this is going to get quite messy, especially on the um, the runny part that's coming down the side of the eye. So then I take the red after I'm happy with the pink and I just layer that on over the lid and blend it up into the crease. So you can see that this starts to give it a little bit more dimension. It keeps it from looking too bubblegum. Um, but if we did the straight red, I find that straight red shadows look one, a little bit chalky, and two, it's, it's what she wears is kind of a blend. Um, so I'm just dragging that over the lid, packing it on, and then dragging it down the side of the face to where it would kind of, if you were crying, where the tears would fall. And then I took this other brush that I had used last night um, to test out the blue on the other eye, and I knew it would have a little bit of residual blue shadow still in the bristles. This is not necessary. I just did it because I liked that little hint of blue on the edges. It almost made it look like the red and pink were fading out to a purple. And then I took a smaller kind of fat pencil brush with some black shadow from that same Morphe palette, it's in the corner, and just put it on the outer corner, the inner corner, and then bridged it through the crease, and then took the big fluffy brush we had used for the red and the pink and blended it out. Same thing back and forth. This is a layering process. You are gonna see me, this, this looks like a hot mess until the very end when you start to see it come together. So it just takes patience. Um, so I just put the black in the inner and outer corner and then blend it out with the fluffy brush, add more red, blend it out, add more red, add more black. It's a little bit at a time until you get the desired effect that you're looking for. And the blending is critical. If you don't have the patience to blend it back and forth, it's going to look especially blotchy. Um, so now with a pencil brush, a pretty pointed one actually, I'm going to take the red and just kind of blur that out along the lower lash line and bridge it out to that blurred dramatic dripping corner of the eye so that it all comes together. And it's okay for this to look messy, just blend until you're happy with it. And then to do the blue eye, I'm actually going to switch to the Urban Decay Electric palette and use um, Chaos, this darker blue, and then Gonzo, that brighter blue on top. You could do the whole look with either of these palettes. I just happen to have both, so I'm showing you guys a range. I think more people probably have the Electric palette. Uh, because Morphe you typically would just have to order from them, whereas the electric palette you can totally get at Sephora. Um, but yeah, you could just do the whole look with one palette or the other. 
just showing you guys some options. So I'm using another fluffy brush, uh, very similar to the one we used for the red eye, and just packing on these colors. Again, do not let it come up too high up your brow bone. You want to stay in the crease and then just blur out the edges. I started with the darker um, color Chaos and then layered on some of the brighter Gonzo, and now I'm starting to pull that down over the cheekbone into the hollow of my face. So if my face was wet and my makeup ran, you want to basically draw down the shadow where the water would naturally carry it. That was a nice, um, nice splotch of the brighter gonzo blue that I just added right there to make that, um, that pouring corner of the eye really pop. And then I took the pencil, the fat pencil brush that we used for the black on the red eye, and I added some black in the corners of this blue eye. It's okay that the lid is getting a little patchy. We're actually going to add one more shadow that's not from this palette to the lid to really pull this eye together. Um, so it's all right if the black is making this side a little bit of a hot mess. It's the final step that will pull it together. I'm taking a tiny bit of white shadow from the Morphe palette with a tiny little brush and just cleaning up the top and brightening up the brow bone. Um, I wanted to make sure that that blue shadow doesn't, you know, move upward and kind of has a defining point. So now this is the Kat Von D. I think they're like the metal crush shadows. They're really incredible. The color payoff is amazing. And with a flat, um, fluffy brush, I'm just going to pack that onto the lid, no higher than the crease. But you can see that's very similar to the gonzo color, but adds some shimmer because the red side of the face has a little bit more oomph going on with the tattoos, so that little bit of glitter gives the blue eye a little something extra. Um, and then with the more pointed pencil brush, again, just taking some of the blue shadows. These are from the electric palette and just blending them out along the lash line to, again, bridge with the outer corner. With a tiny bit of makeup remover and a regular Q-tip, this is how we're going to make this look like it actually came from being like cried off or her getting wet. So you just take this soaked tip and just a little bit at a time kind of drag it through the shadow and it's going to take off some of the shadow but in a really messy way. You want to use light, you want to be light handed here so you have control and just take off a little bit at a time. You can also kind of smear it. Um, I went back in with a little bit of shadow on the brush while my face was still wet and just adjusted how it looked. Um, for liner, I picked, I had this sample of the Urban Decay 24-7 liner in LSD. It's kind of like a really bold, iridescent blue, and I'm going to use that to line the blue eye. So the upper lash line, not quite all the way to the inner corner, but enough so that you have somewhere for your lashes to go. And then with the Ardency in Modster um, black liner, this is so crazy awesome for inner, inner water lines. I'm going to line both eyes, inner water lines, um, with this pencil. Because we do want this to look dark and kind of gritty. Um, it, she certainly has that evil side going on, so we want the eyes to be fairly dramatic. Um, and then on the red eye, to you know, in place of that blue liner we used on the other side, I just took an angled brush and rubbed some of that Modster Ardency In Black liner on the brush and then um, stayed really close to the lash line and just did kind of a messy um, liner on the top and the bottom. On the bottom I didn't go any further than like halfway across and on the top I went almost all the way to the inner corner. Um, and then just to soften that a little bit and keep it smudgy and messy I took a that pe pointed pencil brush and just kind of blended everything out on the top and the bottom and it also helps marry it with the shadows that we had there. Next is mascara. This is the CoverGirl um, Volume Blast Mascara in Very Black. Um, this was my ride or die forever. I've switched to the Tarte Tartise Lash Paint, but when I wear false lashes, that other mascara is actually just too intense. Um, so I go back to this CoverGirl Lash Blast and it works perfectly. It's really black, so it really helps your lashes blend in with any falsies that you're putting on. Um, so just one good coat, top and bottom. I always coat my bottom lashes if that's not your deal. You can skip it, but I really think, especially with a dramatic eye look, that when you don't paint your bottom lashes the whole, it just feels incomplete. It really feels like some level of definition on the bottom of the eye is missing. So now for lashes, which style should we pick? Um, I actually picked a new pair that I'm so excited to wear. These are Violet Voss, and they're called Just Slayin'. Felt very appropriate for our Miss Harley Quinn here. 
And uh, I'm sorry my face goes off camera when I put the lashes on because I got too close to the mirror, so you're not going to see me apply the other eye at all. Um, but these are gorgeous lashes. I'm really loving them. They wore really comfortably all day. I had this look on for a good 10 hours um, between filming and then going to the movies. So um, loving these lashes. To do my brows, her brows are really messy. So I'm using the Naked Basics palette, the first one. And I'm using the brown hair, uh, color, the brown shadow called Fawn, I think it's called. And then just an angled Anastasia brow brush. I'm just going to make kind of messy strokes and fill them in. I'm not doing a super structured arch. I'm not doing a really long tail. They're not going to be quite as clean or precise. I actually don't mind if they're a little bit messy because her brows in the movie are um, fairly natural and a little unkept. You know, she's, she's a you know crazy bad guy, and I don't know that she really has time to worry about her brows. Girl's got stuff to do. So um, just brushing it out with the spoolie, not too perfect. I wanted some of the hairs to kind of stand up and then um, I didn't show doing the other brow but I just filled the other one in quickly and then set both of them with the Anastasia um, clear brow gel because that stuff is life and that's just a close-up view of how that came together. For the lip we're going to use two products. The first one is Jeffree Star's liquid lip in the color Masochist. This is the most awesome pink known to man. It actually dries a little bit more red and a little less fuchsia um, as it dries matte. So you're seeing the brightest that it ever looks right now. Um, but it's okay because we're going to put a little red over it anyway. And then because she's messy and for a lot of the movie during the fight scene her lipstick is smudged, I did draw a smudge and then with my actual finger just draw it down a little bit so it felt um, authentically messy and not like perfectly drawn on and then to do the top simple simple um, well, something I love about this formula is it's so thick you don't really feel like you need a liner to get it on precisely and then with ColourPop slippy stick in the color Bichette which is a very brick red um, this is again like we do with the eye how we get more dimension so it's not just pink and not just red it kinda has layers of both and makes the perfect color so all that's left to do is set with Urban Decay Makeup Setting Spray, and this Harley Quinn lookalike is complete. I hope you guys enjoyed. See the movie, have fun, kill some bad guys, and uh, I'll talk to you guys soon. Bye!